Welcome back to Easy Mom of Many Hats. It's fall here in the desert southwest, so that means the fall holidays are upon us. Today I'm going to show you how to make an easy project. I'm going to show you how to make these cute little ghosts using some easy to find materials. It's a really simple process and I think you'll have a lot of fun doing this. To do this project, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need some fabric, either muslin or cheesecloth, or this little guy is actually made out of some thin blanket batting. You're going to need some glue, Elmer's glue, or any white glue will do, and you're going to be thinning this out, and I'll tell you how to do that in just a minute. You're going to need scissors to cut your, uh, your fabrics, and you're going to need some embellishments, either some beads or a pen or something that you can use to, to make the little faces on the ghost. And then, of course, if you're going to be using embellishments, you'll need some glue for that as well. Another thing you're going to need to have on hand or construct before you start your project is a little body to shape your ghost around. I've used styrofoam. I have a styrofoam comb and then a styrofoam ball and then also two little uh, sucker sticks in the side to create the arms. Now before I start my project I want to cover this surface in plastic wrap. Anything that's going to have any of our fabrics touching it will need to be wrapped either a non-stick surface or wrapped in plastic wrap. Now this is a really simple project. First thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut your fabric pieces. For this little guy, I've cut fabric pieces that are about double the length of both sides of our little ghost figure here. Now you're going to want to do a couple inches longer on either side because you're going to want the overflow hanging of the ghost's skirt at the bottom. Now I've cut four pieces. I've cut one for the front, one for the back, and then two to kind of hang over the arms just to give it a little bit of a complete look. So we have our fabric. We're also going to need glue. I've thinned down this glue. For this little guy, I'm going to use probably about oh half a cup of glue and maybe another quarter cup of water or maybe three-fourths of a cup of glue and a quarter cup of water. You're going to want about a three to one ratio on your glue to water, uh, more glue than water. Depending on the fabrics you're using, if you're going to use a thicker product, th thicker fabric like this batting, you'll want to use uh, thicker glue, use less water because it's going to need a little bit more sturdiness. For this muslin that I'm using today, we're going to use a three to one ratio. Now to start this project, I've thinned out my glue and made sure I've mixed it well. So I have a nice uh, thin or a nice smooth mixture. I've covered my structure with plastic wrap so there's no worry of that sticking. And now I'm going to get to constructing my ghost. Very simple project. I'm going to do the arms first. Now for the arms, I've done a smaller rectangle of fabric. That's just to kind of help it hang over and so there's no gaps. So I'm going to do my arms first. I'm going to saturate my fabric into my glue solution. Now this gets a little sticky but, but you're going to want it nice and um, saturated with, with the solution because that's, going to wet, that's what is going to give it structure. Now I've got my first piece and I'm just going to hang it over this little guy's arm. Maybe give it a little shape around the bottom. So I've got one arm going there. I've got my second arm I'm going to do. Just saturate it and then squeeze out the excess because again, you want it saturated, but if it's dripping, it's going to take a really long time to dry. So go ahead and make sure it's saturated, but not dripping wet with the glue solution. Okay, I've got my other arm going here. And I want to make sure I've kind of indented here so I have the, the ghost shape, the arm shape. I'm forming his little skirt around the bottom. Now I'm going to do the, the front and back panels. I'm going to drape the back panel first just so our front has a nice finished look. Again, this is a messy project so make sure you have a vinyl cloth down or you're doing it outside. It's really fun but it does get kind of sticky and messy. So I've got my back panel all saturated and I'm going to drape it over my little ghost. Don't worry if it doesn't go all the way down on the front side there because we're going to have our front piece that's going to finish off the front. 
Again, we want to make sure we're keeping the shape of our ghost. So go ahead and, and form his little arms in there. And then my last piece is going to be my front piece. And again, I've got this saturated. And then I've also squeezed out as much as I can. Let me get a little more on that. Let me spread out my fabric here because we want it to have a nice straight. It's going to naturally have some folds and flows in it. That's what you want. That gives it kind of that flowy little bit of a spooky look. These guys are a little bit spooky, but they're also really, really cute. So I'm going to drape my last piece here. Again, keeping in mind, I want to form his arms, maybe drape his skirt a little bit here. Give him a little structure, little shape here. And we've got the base of our ghost going. Now, depending on your climate, you're going to want these guys to dry for at least 24 hours. I live in a very dry climate, and it takes about 24 hours for these little guys to set up. The guy that I've showed you here, I've made him out of muslin, and that's what this guy looks like here. He's dried for about 24 hours. I took him off of the base that I made, it came off easily because remember I covered it in that plastic wrap. And then he's nice and sturdy and dry. And I just embellished him with some little sequins, so two little eyes and a little mouth. This guy's an adorable little guy. Take an electric tea light that kind of glistens and glows and put it under his skirt. It's just adorable. These are not flame retardant, so you don't want to use a real type tea light. Use an electric candle for this. This was a fun little fall project. I hope you'd enjoyed this. Have a wonderful fall and come back and visit us again soon. Have a great day.